Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here, asking the question, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And in this video, it is my intention to show you exactly what it means to be washed in the blood of the Lamb and show you how you can assure yourself that you are, in fact, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, sometimes when I do videos like this, I like to go in and see what other people have said on the subject. A lot of times looking for verses that I could add to the discussion. But when I came in to try to find a video to peruse on the subject of being washed in the blood of the Lamb on YouTube, most of the videos that appear seem to only be songs and music. So there are plenty of people singing about being washed in the blood of the Lamb. But when you dig in and try to get some understanding of what it means to be washed in the blood, all you really get is songs about it. But when you come over and you look at the scripture that talks about the blood of the Lamb, you see that its importance should warrant a lot of discussion as people try to make sure that they meet the requirements of being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Like for instance over here in Romans chapter 5 verse 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So there's a lot going on in this verse. It's even talking about the day of the Lord or the day of his wrath that you read about in the book of Revelation in chapter 6. And it's talking about how we are to be spared from that wrath or saved from that wrath. And you see here that it is because of the blood of the Messiah. We are justified in his blood so that we don't have to endure the wrath that is to come. You hear many people say that the bride does not have to go through the day of the Lord or will not fall victim to the terrible events of the tribulation. Well, we see here in this verse that it is because of the Messiah's blood that we are spared. So the question in this video that we're going to answer is how can we be sure that we are washed in his blood. Now as we pull out many of these verses you may want to pull out a pencil and a piece of paper and jot these down so you can go back after the video and review them for yourself. But one of the first verses that we'll talk about is over here in the book of Revelation in chapter 7 which is the chapter that we hear about the 144,000 and that multitude that no man can number, which are the only people that will get to see the kingdom of heaven in this lifetime. The multitude that no man can number will be these people who are arrayed in white robes and the 144,000 will be the instructors who would have helped those people to understand how to have their robes whitened. Let's look at verse 14. It says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, when we are talking about being washed in the blood of the Lamb, we're actually talking about our spiritual garments, or the cleansing of our spiritual tabernacle what they refer to as the third temple. Now another verse that we'll quickly look at is Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. It's talking about our Messiah who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Notice that it says unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. So if we are writing stuff down we would write down the fact that our sins are cleansed away with this blood of the Messiah. But the question still remains, how does this work? Now, a lot of people, I don't like to label people, will say that 
when the Messiah died on the cross, his blood was spilled so that we don't have to worry about the Old Testament laws and covenants. Now, that should seem a little odd, especially when you look at the Sermon on the Mount, which was probably the Messiah's most important speech. He told us that he didn't come to get rid of the law, but he came to bring the law into fruition. And what he did to do so was teaching his disciples to understand the true meanings of the law and the covenant to do away with the old traditions that were not part of the covenant. But anyway, we'll come back to that. What we're talking about is how are we washed in the blood of the Lamb? Is it possible that the blood that the Messiah spilled on Calvary's cross somehow miraculously does away with all of our sins and we can break the covenant with impunity. I wouldn't be surprised at all if a young child or an alien that never heard those doctrines would see that as saying that the Messiah who came on the scene encouraging people to keep the law and the covenant of Moses was murdered and now we don't have to worry about the law anymore. Here was the number one champion of the law who came to fulfill the law was cut off and murdered before he was able to do so. And now we don't have to worry about the laws anymore. They killed God. So now we don't have to worry about what God says. And now we can have the liberties that we always wanted. Well, I'm sure there's no need for me to tell you that that's not actually how it happened. So let's explain how this blood actually works and how we are cleansed by the blood of the Messiah. Now, one of the clues that we get as far as what they're talking about, we find in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, which is also talking about the blood of Christ. And it says that he was a lamb without spot or blemish. Now, when we go back in the Old Testament and look for the mention of this unblemished lamb, it brings us to the very first Passover celebration that we hear about in Exodus 12. You see in verse 5 that they're told to choose a lamb that didn't have any blemishes on them. This was a representation of the Messiah. You see in verse 6 that they were to kill this lamb on the evening of the Passover. And in verse 7 it says that they were to take the blood of that lamb and strike it on the doorposts of their temporal houses. Now this was a common practice that we read throughout the Old Testament. Blood was always necessary for the cleansing of sins and the sanctification of the temples. Now this was true all the way back in the days of Abel when he brought the firstlings of his flocks and shed their blood to be accepted as an offering for his sins. And it is still true all the way to the book of Revelation and 12, where we hear that the blood of the lamb is still cleansing away sins and sanctifying tabernacles. So how does this work? Did the Messiah spill enough blood to cover the sins of everybody on the planet? And if that were true, how did the application process work? In the book of Exodus, they took hyssop dipped in blood to strike the doorposts and the garments and the altar. So when was the Messiah's blood applied to all of humanity? That's the question that we're going to answer in this video. So let's look a little bit closer at these garments or these robes that is supposed to be washed in the blood because it seems to mention this spiritual clothing more than anything else and 
the first time we start to hear about these blood washed garments is in the book of Genesis chapter 49 when it's talking about the prophecies related to the tribe of Judah you see in verse 10 that it's talking about a lawgiver and that'll be important later but you also see that it's talking about the Messiah in verse 10 where it says unto him shall the gathering of the people be now it's a lot going on in that verse as you can see but when you look at verse 11 you see it talking specifically about the tribe of Judah and it says that Judah is he who washed his garments in the vine and his clothes in the blood of grapes so it is clear that this Judah that's being talked about in the book of Genesis is the same as those being talked about in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and chapter 7 verse 14 so when and how do we wash our garments in his blood when are these spiritual robes made white in the blood of the lamb now like I said you won't find much information on this subject really only songs about it including one of my favorites by Kirk Franklin but I don't think we're going to be able to sing our way into the kingdom of heaven so maybe we should focus more of our attention on finding out what exactly we have to do in order to be cleansed by his blood Hopefully, by now, you are asking yourself the same question. How can you be sure that your garments is washed in the blood of the Lamb? And to summarize the answer, we can come over to the Gospel according to John in chapter 2, when we read about the Messiah at a marriage supper changing water into wine. We see in verse 11 that that was actually the first miracle that he performed. Well, when you come to the book of Matthew in chapter 26 and verse 29, you'll see that his next miracle will be of a similar fashion. You see how he is saying that only when we come to the kingdom of heaven will he drink of the fruit of the vine with us. Well, if you back up a few verses, you see that he's actually talking about the communion festival that happens on Passover. This is what they refer to as the Last Supper, which occurred on the evening of the Passover with the Messiah and all of his disciples. Well, you see in verse 27, he took the cup and after he gave thanks, he gave it to all of the disciples and told them to drink it. And then in verse 28, he goes on to tell them that that what they are drinking is his blood of the New Testament. And when we come to Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 24 helps us to understand that by New Testament, he's talking about the new covenant. But anyway, it goes on to say, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So. The Messiah has changed blood into wine. The Passover wine of the New Testament is the blood of sheep and goats in the Old Testament. So whereas before, during the first month of each year, we were to sprinkle our tabernacles with the blood of sheep or the blood of goats, to be cleansed and to be purified now that purification comes through the drinking of the Passover wine so the answer to the question how do we get washed in the blood of the lamb we do so by partaking in the Passover ceremony every year so in the book of Revelation when it's talking about those that will enter the kingdom of heaven those that are washed in the blood of the lamb 
it is talking about those who actually keep the Passover festival now if you're still not yet convinced let's come over to the book called 2nd Esdras and let's look in chapter 2 verse 38 where it says arise and stand and behold the number of those that were sealed in the feast of the Lord this is exactly what's being talked about in the book of Revelation and chapter 7 see how it's talking about the 144,000 being sealed in their foreheads in verse 2 and it's talking about the multitude that no man can number in verse 9 it's in this same chapter down in verse 14 that we see that these are the people who washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb and when we come back to second Esdras we see in verse 39 that it's talking about these glorious garments that are to be made white in the blood of the lamb after it's talking about those who are sealed at the Lord's feast it says which are departed from the shadow of the world and has received glorious garments of the Lord so it's clear from these verses that you receive your sealing at the Passover festival where your garments are made white like it says in verse 40 where it says shut up those of thine that are clothed in white which have fulfilled the law of the Lord now that was the book of second Esdras but if it wasn't convincing enough let's come to Jeremiah chapter 31 where it's talking about our father saving Judah from the day of wrath and the deliverance of the remnant of Israel well in verse 8 it says I will bring them from the north and will gather them to the end of the earth to the feast of Passover and the people shall beget a great multitude this is talking about the multitude that no man can number in Revelation chapter 7 well notice that it says and I will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover now since it's not clear to everybody based on what we've talked about so far let's come over to the book of John and chapter 6 when the Messiah is going into more detail on the marriage supper or the Passover communion festival you see in verse 47 how he says he that believeth on me has everlasting life and then in verse 48 he goes on to describe me as the bread of life he says in verse 50 that he is the bread which came down from heaven that if a man may eat thereof he shall not die this is the Messiah talking and he says that he is the living bread and if anyone would eat of that bread he will live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world now in verse 52 you can see that the incredulous Jews were confused thinking he was talking about cannibalism or something like that but when you look at verse 53 you see that it is clearly talking about the marriage supper or the Passover when he says except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you is this saying that those who don't keep the Passover are spiritually dead well remember in Exodus and the story of Passover we see that the firstborn males whose family didn't put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts actually died now like I said I don't like to label people but many of these Jeremiah 14 and 15 prophets who are telling you not to keep the feast of Passover are dead now are they intentionally trying to kill you too by suggesting that you not keep the feast of Passover maybe you should read Jeremiah chapter 14 to see what happens to those people in verse 16 eating of his flesh which is the bread of life 
and drinking of the wine which is his blood shed for the remission of sins well back in Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 through 27 we see that he was talking about the Passover when not only did he take the cup and command his disciples to drink it but he also broke bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body so it is through the partaking of the Passover lamb that we get eternal life and our tickets into the kingdom of heaven because our garments are now washed and made white now let's take a quick look at the general epistle of Barnabas down in chapter 5 and verse 11 is talking about what remission of sins does for us it says seeing therefore he has renewed us by the remission of our sins he has put us into another frame that we should have souls like those of children forming us again himself by the spirit now this is what it means by the incorruptible body that should be easy to understand when you remember that it is sin that causes sickness and death well if you have the remission of your sins you won't have to suffer sickness or death this is extremely important in this day when all of these pestilences and plagues are taking over the world well let me remind you of verse 15 out of the book of Jubilees chapter 49 which says that those who keep the feast of Passover will not be slain or smited in that year so while people are lining up to get vaccine after vaccine in order to clear this pandemic which will only be replaced by another pandemic requiring a different vaccine those who love the Lord can get a yearly vaccine by keeping the Feast of Passover. But anyway, let's come back over to the book of Barnabas. Talking about the remission of sins. It says in chapter 8 and verse 21, Having received remission of our sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we are become renewed, being again created as it were from the beginning, Wherefore, God truly dwells in our house, being again created as it were from the beginning. And that beginning that he's talking about is the days of Adam and Eve, when people lived for 900 years or more. Well, as I'm putting all of this together, I see that it is through Passover where we receive the remission of our sins like we read about in Matthew chapters 26 and 28 that will return us to this sinless state where we will not have to suffer from death or sin and we will have the eternal life that the Messiah was talking about over in the book of John. So now that you have made it this far in the video and you understand what it means to be washed in the blood of the Lamb and how it is necessary to keep the Passover every year to receive that remission of our sins, either you are thanking the Father that He gave you a mind to keep the Passover this year or you are wondering when you will get the next opportunity to keep the Passover and to get your garments washed in the blood. So let's talk about that. In Leviticus chapter 23, when we're hearing about the Feast of the Lord, we see that the Passover is to take place in the 14th day of the first month. Notice how it says at even or after the sun goes down. Well, that is exactly when the Messiah and his disciples had that marriage supper on the evening of the 14th day of the first month. So if you understand the sacred calendar, which we do many classes on, 
you may be thinking that you have actually missed Passover and that you need to wait about 10 or 11 months to get your garments washed in the blood. Well, that's why we are doing this series of videos to make you aware of what we call second Passover. In other words, you still have a chance in the year 2021 to get your garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. To show you what I mean, let's come over to the book of Numbers in chapter 9. You see, it starts off talking about how the children of Israel kept the Feast of Passover in the first month, according to what we read in Leviticus chapter 23. Well, in verse 6, you see that there were certain men who were unclean and unable to keep the Passover on the correct day. And when they came to Moses asking what it was that they were supposed to do, Moses went before the Lord for instruction and were told that they were to keep the Passover in the second month. You see in verse 11, the 14th day of the second month at even, they should keep the Passover. So, in other words, you actually have two times in a year to get this right. So, for those of you who kept the Passover in the first month, you should consider sharing this video with your loved ones by copying and sending a link to them by way of your phone or posting it on your Facebook account and tagging your family members in it or in Twitter or any of a dozen other ways you can share so that those who truly love the Lord and want to be in the correct place can have this information in time so that they too can participate in the Passover this year. Now for those of you who are observant and notice that verse 10 gives specifics on who can keep the second Passover. Let me bring you over to the book of 2 Chronicles in chapter 30. When King Hezekiah, who in the first month wasn't aware of the Passover at all, commanded that all of Jerusalem would keep the Passover in the second month. And the justification for that is that they were all unclean. The way I understand it, it is during this Passover that we receive our cleanliness. So because they didn't participate in the Passover the previous year, they would have been unclean this year. So they have justification for keeping the Passover in the second month, just like most of us listening to this video do. Because we were unclean and or on a long journey here in spiritual Egypt during the first month, we can, and most of us will, participate in the Passover in the second month. So, when is it? Here is a schedule of the first and second Passovers for the year 2021 through the year 2023. Now, of course, all of this needs to be verified by the new moon, which was to appear on May the 12th in the year 2021. We see that the Passover of the second month in the year 2021 will occur on the evening of May the 25th. So that is the night in which you are supposed to do the communion festival in order to get your garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. It is on that evening after sunset on the 25th when you are expected to have the marriage festival similar to what the Messiah and his disciples did those 2000 plus odd years ago May the 25th after the sun goes down and it is on the evening of the 26th that the week-long celebration starts which ends on June the 1st again this is for those who missed the first Passover back in April of the year 2021 and or those who have family members who need to take advantage of second Passover. So like we said, consider sharing this video with your friends and family and loved ones and children and everybody else that you would like to see in the kingdom of heaven with you. Otherwise, those would be the people described in Matthew chapter 7 in verse 23 
because they are not fulfilling the requirements of Passover, they will not have the right to eternal life and will not be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. And if you are a little bit shy and not sure you want to send this information to everybody, make sure that you send it to the firstborns of your family at least. Remember that it was the firstborn who suffered during the Passover in the time of Moses. It was those guys that died that didn't keep the Passover. They are the Levites of the Bible and when you get to the book of Malachi, you see that when the tables start to turn and people start to return to the will of the Lord, he's going to start with the Levites or the firstborn like you see in Malachi chapter 3 and 3. So make those guys aware of this information. Send them this video and maybe even a bottle of wine or grape juice and some unleavened bread so that they can be sure to partake in this festival on May the 25th after sunset. But now I must mention in this third era this not only applies to the male but also the female. So anybody you know male or female that opened the matrix as the firstborn child of their mother make sure they have this information that goes for your parents, your spouses, your children, friends, and family. So write that date down in your schedule book. Put it on your calendar. May 25th could actually be the most important day of your life. And I know that somebody's going to ask. So let me go ahead and get ahead of you a little bit and say it one more time on the evening after sunset on May the 25th is when you will have the communion celebration you your family in your own home will partake in the fruit of the vine whether it be wine or grape juice and unleavened bread and I must warn you it's going to be difficult to find unleavened bread. So you might want to get a recipe and make your own. Considering that on the 26th of the month of May, you are required to eat unleavened bread every day for seven days. Ending on June the 2nd. So if you would, go ahead and hit the like button on this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel as our main focus is to make sure people are aware of these important dates. We've done classes on the feast days all year round and Lord willing, we will do so this year as well, giving you the correct dates and the correct instruction for the feast days so that when this marriage supper takes place, we'll all be ready to go into the banquet. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.